in the name of my ancestors. Peace, Father, and always. I am the Angel Snuffin' Up 7 on YouTube, and welcome once again to another edition of the Reality Temple on Earth. And I am your host, your uh, brother and friend, Talib Ibn Ra. Excuse me, I, my throat is a little bit uh, scratchy, so please bear with me. I was thinking, and I would advise us to do that. There's nothing wrong with thinking. There's nothing wrong with critical thinking. Some of us think we practice critical thinking. But for those of us who know exactly what that is, when we hear your thoughts that you think are critical, then it is no more than the average. And the average is ignorant. The average is, is not thought out. Uh, it's not examined properly. It's not held under a microscope. It's, it's not detailed. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to us? But since we think, since we think that we think critical, then we are so happy and we become arrogant. See what I know? See what I know? And you really don't know nothing. You just are just filled with emotion and you become grandiose. No more, no less. But I want to say this very quickly before my time runs out. I was thinking and becoming a little analytical about the thing we know of as racism. And do you know? And I was, I was just pondering about diseases. I was pondering about natural disasters. I was pondering about wars. And I could be incorrect. But it seems as though racism has become the greatest plague of humanity than anything, than any volcano, than any earthquake, than any uh, uh, plague by some virus, any type of natural disaster, because this mental illness, this disease, this Mental disaster has caused humanity to hate itself just based on our skin color. Now some of y'all will quickly say, especially during the early 80s, when you had in the news almost every day talk about the Crips and the Bloods, and you said that it is wrong for another man to kill a, another man just based on the color of his clothes. And in schools, they had to change the attire of the children because some of the children wanted to be affiliated with the blood so they would wear uh, red, or they wanted to be affiliated with the Crip gang so they would wear blue. And you say that it is wrong and wacky to kill another person over color, but we do it every day. We hate people because of color. Well, you said, well, the white man did this and the white man did that. Well, that's the same thing that the Crip in the Blood say. Hey, that blood killed my homie. That Crip killed my homie. That Crip or that blood did this. That Crip or that homie done that. So that justifies me. And I know who they are because they're not wearing my colors. I saw this homie was murdered by somebody wearing red. So anything that I see a red, I'm going to go out and kill. 
because they killed one of mine. And so, it is like many of us. We do the same thing. As soon as we see a white person, oh, I can't stand them. Look what they've done. They've done this and they've done that. That devil, that cracker, that demon, and all like that. Automatically, based on color. And then, now, we got to give credit where it's due. Caucasian people or the white man started this color thing. There's no doubt about it. But we as black people, we become a victim of this. Because now we are just as sick. Just like he made us inferior because he wanted to make himself superior based on the color of skin. Now we've done the same thing. We want to build a new world based on a color. We always talking about a color. You don't recognize it. We don't understand and we don't realize how sick we become because we've been under sickness. And when you when you are around a person that is sick, and this is sad because this is not sick by a virus. This is not sick like some kind of disease. This is a mental illness that's not supposed to be contagious. This is the first mental so-called illness that has become contagious. And we spread it to our children. And we spread it to other people. And when we walk down the street, instead of believing or saying, look, they go a human being, he's brown. They go a human being, he's black. They go a human being, he's white. We look at color and class and race and we have stereotypes and these things in our mind, just like the Crips and the Blood gang, which are outlaws, which nobody likes a gang because gangs kill innocent people and they are involved in illegal activity. It's all based on color. It's all based on a sign. And we do the same thing. You're not wearing a bow tie. You're not selling a bean pie. You're not saying hotel. You're not saying assalamu alaikum. Hop out of the garden. you not. You don't have my signs. Then you must be with them on the other. You must support the other side. If you're not wearing red. And I'm a blood and you're in my territory, you must support the Crips. So I got to go down on you, boy. Don't y'all see how sick we become? Because we've been around sickness. Racism is the worst thing that has happened to humanity. It is worse than the bubonic plague. It is worse than any volcano eruption or earthquake. Because this mental illness, not only is it contagious to us who are living now, we pass it all down to our children. And our children really don't know what's happening. They don't understand how it got that way. The Bloods and the Crips kill one another. And really don't know how all of it really started. And why they should be doing that. Because there's no benefit. Where is the benefit? Woo! I don't understand. And even myself, you got to, we got to get out of that mind. We got to escape what racism has done. Black people can't be racist, but we are victims of the races. And we become sick like those who are oppressed us. And this is a problem. That's one of the reasons why we are divided because some of us, some of us believe the other blacks are working with the bloods. And y'all just so happen to be crips. And it's very difficult, as you know, to get the bloods and the crips together. <laughs> but even they try. And as far as I know, it's working decently because they understand and have begun to understand the sick. 
sickness. And we as a people must understand we have become victims of a sickness. We're trying to become, heal ourselves with racism when racism is the thing that causes us to be sick to begin with. It's not going to work. It's going to make us sicker. And when I hear these brothers and sisters out here hollering and screaming, they don't realize they have become diseased. Shut down your comments. My time is out. Thank you for listening. This was and is. I'm your brother, the angel Slum Love 7, Talik Ibn Ra. This was and is. Reality's Temple on Earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. And I am, don't you love the graphics? <laughs> and I am the Angel Snuff Love 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik Ibn Ra. This is another message to Black Power Hotel. To Black Family, I want you to listen to, to something. Black man, those of us involved in Black liberation, the catalyst of black revolution, I want you to listen just for a second. Well, actually, 10 minutes. <laughs> Y'all know I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use the whole 10 minutes, so. Uh, we have a serious problem. The problem comes from our people themselves and it even comes from us believe it or not some of you may be familiar with something called gene influencing gene influencing and what gene influencing simply is, it can be physical, like if you put fish in hot water, they were cold, fish that were used to being in cold water, but if you start warming the water up, and as the fish begin to breathe, as time goes on, the cold water fish are turned into a tropical fish. It's something that the fish does, and, it, and that, that change is recorded in the very gene, the nature of the fish. This can be, that's a physical example. But the same fish, if you did something to the fish in its origins, it'll change the behavior as time goes on the babies would pick up that behavior. So the fish that you started off with would be different at the end and it would carry on because of the influence of the behavior over a certain period of time. So using this as an example, the black man and woman in America, those of us born descendants of slaves, we were trained to be like animals. The black man was trained not to take care of his children. He was a breeder. The black woman was treated like an animal. She's a breeder. We were trained to fear the white man. We were trained just like a dog. If the white man is attacked, if the master is attacked, we have to also jump in and defend our master. And as time goes on, this type of behavior went on for not 
30 days, not for 30 years. This type of behavior passed on for 300 years. So our problem, black power, our problem, black power, is that you're dealing with a people who you call Uncle Tom, you call them state niggas, but that's the vast majority of our people. They were programmed, it's in our very genes. So, for us, for those of us who claim black power, who seek black revolution, self-independence, we are the rare. Because the mass majority, majority of our people are the ones that you don't like. Their mentality is like the Uncle Tom mentality, the cool uh, uh, mentality, the slave mentality. So when we approach them and call them Uncle Toms and Coons and Butt Lickers and all like this, you just make them mad and they really don't understand because it's part of them. Now this is the kicker. While we running around talking about black power, black power family, hotel family, while we running around thinking that we not Uncle Tom's ourselves, that we pro-black, we have the same mentality, ain't we from the same people? Didn't you come from a people that were slaves? So if they, if the, if we, if the genes, if the influence is in our genes, as a people, then it's also part of us. Why you think, family, black power, why you think y'all can't join together? Why y'all divided? Because some of that Uncle Tom mentality is in you. That Uncle Tom mentality is in me. You don't want to admit it because I'm so black. I'm, I'm so pro-black and I'm this and that. That's the reason why. Because that's in you too. It's in me too. That self-hate is still in you. That's why you can't join with another black man. Black power should not be over here. Black power should not be over there. It should be just like this. It should be just like that fist that you raise up. Family. It should be like that, but it's not. Because y'all who claim black power, black liberation, you are Uncle Tom, your damn self. That's why right, I said it. And I know some of you might get mad. But that's the real truth. Deal with it, baby. That's the real truth. Because there's no way to hell. If I'm a black man and I love black people. And we represent black power together. Why are we divided? We are divided because we still have that same mentality. So how the hell do you think our people going to gravitate around that which is weak? Division means weakness. I will guarantee you, once our people see black folks together, if you're not talking about unification, then the only thing you're talking about in black power is entertainment. I'm going to say that again. If you don't want to unify with your brothers and sisters who say they believe in black power, want us to be independent, want us to do for ourselves and learn about ourselves, if you're not talking about unification with your brothers and sisters, then the only thing you're talking about is entertainment. Boy, that nigga show told the white folks off. And the white man still in power. You're talking all this crap, making all these DVDs, CDs, nothing but entertainment. Because there's no power. You have no power in each individual organization. You have no power in each individual. There's no power. So, since there's no power, the only thing you have is entertainment. I'm not your entertainer. If you think I'm here to entertain your ass, then you got another thing coming. That's not what I'm about. It's all about awakening. Those with the Uncle Tom, 
the patriotic monster slave mentality, they must be awakened. But they cannot awaken because those who think they wake still zombies. Y'all still zombies. And you fallen victim to your own propaganda like you really got something going on, but you don't. And I can say that because I'm looking at it. You ain't got nothing except entertainment value. The CIA not worried about you. The FBI not worried about you. Because you're nothing but clown entertainers. Black power. That don't mean nothing. As long as there's division, there's no unification. You ain't got nothing going on. You're just an entertainer. I'm going to talk to us straight. I'm talking to us true and honest. Except the real truth. If I'm black power and you don't want to unify and work with me, then we're nothing but clowns. And I refuse. And I'm too old to be a damn clown. I never liked clowns when I was little. And I damn sure don't care about being a clown now. Think about it. Don't be an Uncle Tom in black power. Be what you claim to be. And let's do this and unify with one another. Or otherwise, sit your ass down. This your brother Talik even raw. This was and is the real truth. The reality's temple on earth. Peace. Alrighty then. Peace fam and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snuffed Up 7, Talik Even Raw, and welcome, <laughs> I'm, ton I'm tongue tied, and welcome once again to another edition <laughs> of the Realities Temple on Earth. Oh, man. Since I'm before the camera, I, I wanted to deal with this subject. Before I shut shut the equipment down, this uh, message is is really for the men, the males, rather than the ladies. But of course, I like for the ladies to also the women, even some of the girls. There's a difference between girls, ladies, and women. But it's good for all. And I would hope that grown adult women would stop allowing people to call them girls because you're not a girl. There's a difference. A girl is immature. A girl is a child. You're a grown woman. Some of y'all are very grown. You're 50, 60 years old. You should see or feel that it is disrespectful. Man, I'm tongue-tied. It's disrespectful to call you a girl. And if you're not and if you're not a bimbo or acting like some uh, loose woman, then you should if you're uh, between a girl and a woman, you're lady and you're ladylike, then either you're a grown woman or they should call you a wonderful young lady. This message goes out to these men who I believe, I'm not really sure because I haven't really been out there in a long time, but I'm pretty sure they still like bashing women and they got this thing about and the feminism this and the women that and la 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 la. I just cannot get into that. I just I just cannot do it. Because a man is just too strong. In a lot of cases, he's strong mentally. We already know physically. But he can become strong mentally or verbally. And words hurt women. Women, the way we've been conditioned, women are more emotional than men are. So you have all these 
black women bashing videos, the women get so emotional, they know they should stay away, leave these guys alone, let them simmer in their own anger or frustration or whatever, but they go to these videos and they make these comments just so these misguided men can beat up on them. This is what I want to say to black men or any man that bashes a woman verbally, let alone physically. Okay, we got a problem on our hands. We know that feminism and other things have caused this division between men and women. We know this. So, answer my question, how do you achieve any type of benefit by bashing constantly these women who are nothing but a victim of what you say, feminism and whatever? What are you going to gain? The majority of my jobs was in customer service. And when you come to McDonald's, the person at the register is supposed to tell you, Hi, welcome to McDonald's. My name is so-and-so. Have a nice day. What would you like? Very kind and courteous. If you want women to listen to what you're talking about, if you went to McDonald's and you was getting ready to give your order, how would you react to somebody? Yeah. Yeah, you at McDonald's. Where the hell you think you was at? Man, this, this damn menu been up here for, for a hundred years. You don't know what the menu McDonald's is selling the same stuff since 1965 or whatever. Damn, man, hurry up. I got a date later on. How would you feel with that type of attitude when you go to McDonald's? You wouldn't like it. So how do you expect to get any response from these women? How do you think you're going to get them to listen to what you have to say by that type of talk? Bash, 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 and y'all this, and the woman and that, and blah, blah. Why don't you change your strategy? And not only to women, that's anybody. Nobody want to hear about their negativity, what's wrong with them all the time. People want to hear nice things. They want to hear kind things. That's why a lot of these women get pregnant. Because the dude... The guy who they talking with, he said, hey, baby, damn, that's a fly dress you got on. Hey, what's that you, what's that you wearing? That show smell good. Man, that's, ooh, look at your teeth. They so bright and shiny. And you know you got it together. Damn, ain't no woman as fly. I'm, no, I'm serious. Ain't no woman as fly as you. You, you really got it going on. You, boy, if I could turn a flip. Hey, I'll be turning blue, blue. You got to bring a little something better. When you praise people, regardless whether they deserve it or not, when you praise people, when you talk to them in a positive manner, they will begin to listen to you. Ain't that what you want? Don't you want the woman, don't, want, don't you want the woman to embrace you? Don't you want her hug? Don't you want her kiss? You can't, you can't get that by feeding her or anybody. It's always good to be kind. Now, in my case, <laughs> it's a little different. You're not, in my case, I try to be kind. And I <laughs> They still keep want to whack on me. <laughs> hey, I, I can't. Hey, I can't win for losing. So, but you're not me. You're not me. You just want a decent conversation with the women, so you can tell them what has happened, so they can break up out of what feminism has caused them to behave or condition them to be. 
And there are other factors. Whatever you want to explain to them was the cause behind male-female division. But I'm telling you, from experience and it's common sense, nobody wants to be hurt and beat. You don't either. I used to have some old videos, and I knew I was just talking about men should not beat and beat women verbally, and just talking about men in general, but y'all went nuts. You flagged the video, you went crazy. That dude there, you went ballistic, because you don't want nobody talking negative about you. You don't want nobody examining you and showing you your flaws. So why? So why do you go to women and make all these anti-women bashing videos when you don't like being bad? Well, they got Oprah and they did this and they... Why don't you show them a different side of manhood? Show them the kind man. Show them the understanding man. They are victims. Just like you are a victim. They have no power. Any power these women have is because somebody, some man gave it to them. And that's who you need to concentrate on. The ones who place them in the position that they're in. Who give them their power. But instead, it's cowardly to concentrate on the victim. When... You need to concentrate on those who caused the problem to begin with. So all I'm saying is, not that you're wrong, but your strategy needs to change. Show them some love sometimes. And then I guarantee you, they'll turn around and show you some love. Then y'all can come to, some, uh, to the table and really talk, and both sides will listen to each other. And then both of you will come out of this trap that the powers that be have us in. That's all I want to say on that issue. This is your brother Tony Give me raw time runs out. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. Till next time, jot down your comments. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snuffing Up 7. Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another, hopefully, exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I was born in the 1960s. A few months after I was born, the President of the United States John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated. About two years later, I was probably two years old or three, one of our great leaders, Malcolm X, was assassinated. And then three years later, Martin Luther King. I lived I was born during a period of civil rights struggle in America. Black people were standing up for their rights and for the first time in our history learning about their blackness on such a national level. All over the country, there was brother and sister talk. There was something called Black Pride. But within Black Pride, there were those who still carry a grave slave mentality. They still considered themselves colored people. They still considered themselves Negro. And the only reason why they didn't like black was because black was made to look as being an inferior. 
when I was growing up. I was darker than a lot of my family members and classmates. But what hurt so bad was the taunts and the mockery of my being dark, not from strangers, of which were black people, because I didn't really see white people until I got some age on me. I, it was a long time before I seen Caucasian people. It was black people who was making mockery that I was dark. I was called cold baby, tar baby, you know, black Yankee, all anything, black devil. Some of y'all might call me a black devil today. <laughs> y'all something else. But uh yeah. So for me. I had to either learn how to love myself as being a dark black man or attempt to do what I've seen others do is try to make myself as Caucasian looking as possible. I am so happy that I had relatives in the nation of Islam who gave me books that taught me how to love my black self. So it never got that far where I had to experiment with trying to find a more Caucasian look or behave like a Caucasian, act like a Caucasian. And those who made mockery of me, since I began to learn what my blackness was, I learned how to defend that dark skin. I learned how to defend the big nose and the thick lips. And made those who were also dark, or maybe a lighter skin black, with big nose, thick, thick lips, and kinky hair, made them look silly because you're trying to be something that you're not. That's the subject of this video. Whereas I learned that I was a black man that come from a strong people. And I learned how to embrace my darkness. There are those back then and there are those now that hate their darkness. More and more, especially our celebrities, those blacks that can influence our babies, they are wearing their hair more straight. Even if it's a weed, it's to make themselves look more Caucasian. They're putting more of this makeup on their faces to look more Caucasian. They're bleaching their skin. They make sure they get many as possible pictures to get taken with Caucasian people so they can say, look, I got Caucasian friends. When you talk about slavery or anything of the past, they do like this. They don't want to hear you because they don't want to think about and be rem reminded that they came from a people who were enslaved. I'm done with that. I'm better now. Can't you see how close I am to my master? When I see entertainers like Beyonce and Jay-Z and all those, they are filled with this material wealth and greed. They think the more successful they are, the more material things they get, they think that for some reason these Caucasians or going to accept them as one of their own. But when these blacks get in trouble, who do they call on that for help? Who do they call on to cry on their shoulder? Then they come back to their people. We should start to begin to reject people like that. Do you understand? Why should you be ashamed that you are children of slaves? That's true. And before you Caucasians begin to smile 
and grin and think that your beginnings is so great. Not too long ago, your ancestors came out of a cave, walking on all fours, didn't know how to take a bath. Look it up, your own history. It's not a secret. So don't try to think or believe that you're greater. And that's another thing. Y'all Negroes who trying to be Caucasian. If you want to be part of them, then get on your all, on your all fours. And declare that the dog is your best friend. Some of y'all already eating raw meat. You're wearing animal fur. You want to be like them. That's where they come from. They just came out of a cave. A little less than or a little more than 6,000 years ago. None of us can brag about our humble beginnings. And all of us came from a sperm and egg. Have y'all seen that sperm and egg? Well, maybe in some porno flicks. Some of y'all often to that. That's where you began. So none of us should try to be bragging about I'm so great and I'm this and that. Look where you come from. Check out any porno movie. Or people in your next door neighbor. <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Don't people in your next door neighbor when they ain't this. <laughs> Why are you shame black man? Why are you shame black woman? To be a children from a slave. You think like that's so bad. I embrace it because even though my people were enslaved for over 300 years, it did not break us. We're having problems. We still have a slave mentality. But we made it. We endured that for 300 years. Not 30 days. Not 30 years. For three. Hundred years. They put slavery on us. And all thing we did was duck and jab like, like a brilliant boxer. We knew how to be flexible and deal with the oppression. There ain't nobody on this planet. The Jews claimed they had a Holocaust. And they still complaining about the Holocaust and what somebody did this and somebody did that. Black folks, our general attitude is, hey, What's done, what's done is done. It is what it is. <laughs> but the only problem with that is that we're trying to be like those who oppressed us. Learn how to love yourself for a change. There ain't nothing wrong with you, black man. There ain't nothing wrong with dark skin, kinky hair, big lips, whatever. Look at all the people copying everything we do. Oh, y'all got it all messed up. Except who you are, be yourself. Love yourself. This is your brother Talik even rock because I love my damn self. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. Peace five and always. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is your brother Talik even rock And welcome once again to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth. As always, in the name of my ancestors, regardless whether I say that or not, everything I am, or was, or will be, is due to those prior to myself, my ancestors, my great, great, great grandparents. And I say what I say, I do what I do, because they are the reason why I exist. And if they could, they want it better for us. So, what I want for us is better. But to continue to try to integrate within this racist society, that does not give us nothing is not better. To fight in the army, the military of this nation that don't give a damn about us is not better. 
to drink alcohol and liquor is not doing better. To continue to impregnate our women, black men, and don't marry her and protect her is not better. So here at the Realities Temple, I represent better. The best. Or nothing at all. It's either the best or nothing at all. Black Paul family. That's who I want to talk to on this video. Black Power family. I want to talk to us for a few minutes. I want to give you a, a scenario. What if y'all came into power today, family? What you gonna do? First of all, the, the first thing y'all gonna do is have civil war because you divide family. How are you gonna be a black power family and this man is over here and he's over there? That's why we have not been successful this day. Family, because family is divided. So we're gonna have civil war. Even though there's no white people around, even though the racist cracker or devil, whatever you want to call him, he's not in power, you're gonna start killing one another. I'm telling you this, because you're doing it now and you're not even in power. So what would happen if you got a little power? Family. It's easy to say that. But you're a divided family. When you gonna guide these black people? Family. When you gonna take them? So now, here they are waiting on your leadership. The first problem, like I said before, is you divided. Here, these people want to go that way. These want to go that way. And the sad thing about it, y'all claim y'all gods. You claim that you're from the most high and that you come from the greatest people that ever walked the planet. But you have and continue to carry on old ideas, old thinking. You want to you want to market the Nation of Islam teaching. You want to talk about Kemet. You want to talk about what the Moors done. And all of it has failed us. You don't want to accept the reality. Then you claim that you are from the greatest people on the planet. With gods and goddesses. But now, family, y'all in power. But you can't create nothing like your ancient family done. You can't create nothing, something out of nothing like God can. You hold on to old ideas, old thoughts. You want to do it the way they did in Kevin. How they did it in Egypt. You want to do it the way they done it in Israel. Ancient Israel. Or you want to do it how Master Farah Muhammad think that we should have done it. You want to hold on to our new or uh, old ideas. But you claim that you come from those who created something out of nothing. You want to be God but can't create nothing. You don't even create new thoughts. You hold on to old stuff. So now, black power, black family, the scenario is, is that we are now free from the racist Caucasian devils or white men or whatever you want to call it. Okay, we're free now. What you going to do with the people? Here they are. Now they looking to you. The spotlight is on you. What you going to do, family? Black man, with all this knowledge and wisdom you think that you got, now you got the people waiting. What you going to do? You want to make a Muslim out of me? You want to make an Arab out of me? You want to make an Egyptian out of me? All these things that you said that we was, that was conquered and destroyed, you want to bring it back. If you race a car in a race and 
that car smash into a wall. You will rebuild that car. But you want to rebuild it better than what it was because if it smash again, at least it won't suffer what it suffered because it will, you want to build it a better car. Do you understand what I'm saying to us? Because if we continue, we keep the same design, that means it'll smash just like it smashed last time. If we become Egyptians again, or Moorish again, or Hebrew again, then those who know how they was broken, how they was conquered, will do it again. It's as simple as that. Sooner or later, you will be conquered. You will be through. Where are you going to take the people? You're going to take the people forward? Or are you going to take us back in the past? i tell you this, Black Power family, I don't want to go back in the past. I don't want to go back to the 60s. I don't want to go back to the 30s. I don't want to go back to ancient Kemet. I don't want to be a Moor. I don't want to be the past. I'm a brand new human being. I don't want to be black. That's something, that's a word that was used back in the day. We've grown beyond those things. Where you going to guide the people, family? You in power now. That's the scenario. You in power. Now what you going to do? Just copy Copy what they did in the past. And you think that makes you great. Because you can quote what somebody did. And only repeat what they did. If you God, God creates something out of nothing. If we are the children of those who created civilization. Then... We should be able to do the same thing our parents done. Not copy them, but become greater and better than they were. Because that's what our parents want for their children, for the, for the children to become better than what they was. And if you can't accomplish that, family, then you might as well sit down. You want to keep us living in the past. Y'all get up every day and make these videos like you talking great wisdom. Oh, this and that and that and that. Y'all think y'all talking some big stuff. Repeating crap from the past. I'm not going to live in the past. Those who live in the past, in psychiatry, have a mental problem. It's called a bit of insanity. Because what is done is done. You got to move forward. You can take some of the ideas of the past, but you got to move forward. Y'all want to copy exactly what they was doing back then. We drive cars now. We don't ride camels. This is your brother Taliki Mira talking to the family. Y'all know how we do it. Think about it. Where are you going to take us, black man? This was and is the reality's temple on earth. Jot down your comments. Peace.